Hi, everyone. Good evening or good afternoon, good night or good morning, depending on where you are in the world right now. My name is Laura Apisical, and I'm the director of the Dornsife Admission and Student Success Office. I'm so honored to be able to greet you today and to welcome you to the USC Dornsife family. When I started at USC a freshman a little longer ago than I care to admit, email was a relatively new phenomenon. I was so concerned about how I would be able to keep in touch with my high school friends when I was far from home attending college. And discovering this thing called email and being given an email address, that was life changing. Can you imagine how excited I was when I learned about the internet? True story. If you are attending USC from home, your concern may be just the opposite of what mine was. It may be much easier at this point to keep in touch with friends from high school or your previous college and much more difficult to make new friends at USC. After two and a half weeks of classes in our very atypical online semester, the question that I've been hearing more than any other is, how can I meet people and get involved outside the classroom when everything is online? Today, we will be talking with Fabia Vina from our campus activities office and hearing from a few of our Dornsife ambassadors, student leaders who will highlight the ways they've been able to delve into co-curricular opportunities at USC. We'll do our best to answer some of your questions and concerns related to getting involved and creating a community at USC. Think of Dornsife as your first community, your academic community, but definitely not the only community that you'll be part of at USC. We know that this semester poses some unique challenges, but we hope that you'll be able to glean some helpful tips from our panelists to make the most of not only this semester, but the rest of your semesters at USC. Again, welcome to USC Dornsife. Enjoy the program and fight on. Thank you so much, Laura. My name is Jess Castaldi. I am one of the assistant directors in the Dornsife Office of Admission and Student Success. We have brought together today a great group of USC staff and student representatives to address your questions and concerns about getting involved in different USC and Dornsife activities in this virtual learning environment. So we'll start off with a few questions for our staff panelists. And then after that, you're gonna hear from current USC Dornsife students who are gonna talk about their favorite and most valuable outside the classroom experiences and extracurriculars. Then we'll bring everyone back to answer any questions you may have. So we'd like to encourage you to start thinking about more questions as our, que as our panelists speak. And remember, no question is a bad question. We'll let you know when you can start typing questions into the Q&A box, so feel free to jot down some notes until then. Let's first have our staff panelist introduce herself. So if Bobby, if she already has her video on, if you wanna go ahead and introduce yourself and um, tell us a little bit about the office that you work for. Hi everyone, I am Fabi Avina. I'm one of the program coordinators with Campus Activities. Before I tell you about my work, um, I am a Dornsife alum of 2014. Um, so familiar with, you know, you all's classes. Um, so Campus Activities is the central hub for uh, involvement on campus. So there are five main areas within our department. Um, some of them are you're probably familiar with, some of them you might not be, but hopefully um, we can have, help you understand what those are. So first off, our student government. So we advise both the undergrad and a graduate student government. Um, so they plan events, advocate for the student body, uh, talk to administrators, um, fund organizations. Um, we have our volunteer center where uh, we host different volunteer opportunities, um, all our alternative spring and winter breaks, which uh, winter break's not happening this year, but potentially the spring break will happen. Um, different opportunities for you to engage in the local community um, or nationally right now uh, doing service opportunities. Our student programming, um, which includes our late night of C program. So events that just happen every Wednesday through Saturday, uh, hosted by our department, um, different fun activities for students to just engage in community. And um, we also oversee the recognized student organization. So you may have been a part of the involvement fairs. We hosted six in the first two weeks. Um, so there are about a thousand student organizations um, and they either were at the involvement fair or you can learn more about them um, through their websites or social media. Um, so we manage and recognize those organizations. And the last thing uh, our office does is hazing prevention work and um, workshops and making sure that um, our student body is familiar with um, hazing prevention strategies. So yeah, like I said, we're the central place for students to get involved and um, we're open for all students. So we're not 
the, you know, correlated to a specific unit, um, academic unit. Um, so we serve all students, both undergrad and grad. Awesome. Thank you so much, Fabi, for that introduction to, to the office and what you're doing there. So just to jump in with, with some questions right away, how is campus activities creating community for students during this very unique semester? So our hope, um, we're, our hope with our programs, so every Wednesday through Thursday, or Wednesday through Saturday, I should say, um, are these smaller events. There's, there's nothing, um, you know, we have concerts and large speaker events that our, our student teams and student government host every once in a while. Um, but what we do is host smaller events where um, you as a participant are able to join in with 10, 20 other students, get to know them in a game of Scrabble, in a game of Pictionary um, or karaoke even. Um, so we're creating events where you can talk to other people and engage with them. Um, we're looking at platforms outside of Zoom. Um, we know Zoom fatigue is real. Um, so we're doing events, but we're also doing um, supporting our student organizations with giving them resources um, to host events themselves. So if you don't want to join an event where campus activities is kind of the host, um, you can find an organization that, uh, you know, whose topic relates um, to something you're interested in. So for example, if you were interested in Disney movies, for example, you could join the Disney club and participate in their events. So finding those communities where um, the topics that they're discussing and that they're uh, coordinating events for are things that relate to something you're interested in. So those, those particular um, events and student organizations are helping build those communities um, on campus. And in terms of those different kinds of clubs and organizations, how can our students, or the audience members here, how can they learn about new opportunities as the semester progresses, new ways to, to get involved and stay engaged? So there's a few different areas that I'll point out. Um, the first one is the student portal. So USC launched a student portal on the first day of classes. If you're not familiar with it, um, I'm sure you've seen the emails come through um, we-r.usc.edu um, or experience.usc.edu. The student portal is meant to be the central hub where you can learn about events, different resources across campus departments, learn about departments, um, and just find new opportunities. The other place is our website, so campusactivities.usc.edu. Uh, our website will direct folks to um, different resources and different opportunities. If you're interested in getting an email newsletter every week, we do have a newsletter that goes out every Monday that has the opportunities for that week and any relevant um, information from different departments across campus. So you can sign up for our newsletter or simply follow us on social media. We're constantly sharing out information from different departments, from different student organizations, trying to get the word out about the different opportunities um, so that you all can take advantage of that. So those are three um, places that you can find information. Awesome, thank you. And I mean, I know that Campus Activities has sponsored several signature events in the past. So what can you tell us about any signature events that you have scheduled for this semester? Yeah, so uh, our signature events this semester that you should keep an eye out for, um, we have weekly game nights on Friday. So we'll choose a couple different games every Friday uh, to just have a game night as if you were, you know, playing board games. Um, we do have uh, some chats coming up um, if you haven't heard Visions and Voices, it launched a new series called Thrive, where they're having speakers. Um, Ariana Huffington is tomorrow, um, Deepak Chopra, uh, Rain Wilson, those folks. We're going to have a kind of a smaller group discussion based off of those Thrive conversations. So those will um, be coming out uh, starting with the Rain Wilson event. And then we'll have some paint and craft nights where um, if you pre-register, we're going to ship you a paint kit or a craft kit depending on what we're doing that day um, we're going to ship that over to you after you register and you're going to be able to tune into a zoom meeting where we're going to do a, a virtual paint night or a virtual craft night with you um, and the last thing that i'll kind of highlight is our friends and neighbors day um, so every month our volunteer center team is going to host um, friends and neighbors day where you can um, sign up for the probably a list of between five to 10 organizations that we're doing service with that day. Um, and you can spend an hour, two hours uh, volunteering with that particular organization. Thank you so much, Fabi. That sounds great. I want to go to virtual paint and craft night. Um, 
So we are going to, to move forward um, with our, student, our current students who are going to put their cameras on right now, but we are going to hear from Fabi a little bit later um, during the open Q&A session. So if I could have all of my student panelists turn their cameras on and we will get started with those introductions. And we're going to start with Jess, another Jess. Hi everyone, it's so nice to see you all today. Um, my name is Jess Selmer. I'm a senior originally from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm double majoring in non-governmental organizations and social change as well as public relations. And I also have a minor in social entrepreneurship. Um, a couple of my activities on campus include the USC Hellenes, Trojan Youth Soccer League, Kicks for Kids, and Daily Trojan. Hi everyone, my name is Jackson. I'm a junior from Dallas, Texas. I study archaeology and environmental studies with minors in spatial studies and classical perspectives. And I'm involved with the Environmental Student Assembly as well as um, the Scuba Dive Club SC Underwater. Hi everyone, my name is Aliza Hussein. I'm a junior majoring in cognitive science with a minor in statistics. Um, when I'm not working as a Dorn's Life Ambassador, you'll probably find me giving a tour. I'm a tour guide on campus. Um, I also recently started working as a peer career advisor with the Dorn's Life Career Pathways Office, and I do research on campus that I'll talk about in a bit. Hi guys, my name is Devin. I'm a junior from Orange County, California, double majoring in environmental studies with an emphasis in public policy and in business administration. And um, a couple of things I'm involved in are Unruh Associates, which I'll be telling you a bit about after, um, obviously Dornsife Admission, and then Business Technology Group, and I've done some work in undergraduate student government. So it's a um, pleasure to meet you guys. I'm excited to speak to you today. Hey, I'm Joanne, or Joe for short. I'm a senior. Um, it's my last year. Um, I'm from Portland, Oregon. My two majors are Health and Human Sciences on the psychology track, um, and then also religion. Um, and I just added a natural science minor this year. Um, so I'm super excited for that. Um, some of my involvements on campus are I'm an RA, or a resident assistant. Um, and I'm also a community health organizer um, on campus, and I'm super involved in religious life at USC, as well as acapella, I love to sing, so, yeah. Thank you, everyone, for those introductions. Um, so now that we've heard a little bit about each of these students, each student will have a few minutes to tell you a little bit about their favorite and most valuable outside the classroom experiences and or extracurriculars. So be sure to check the chat as they're speaking. So we're gonna share a few websites that we think you'll find helpful. Um, so as they're talking, you'll be able to, to click on the website and maybe view it later if it's something that you're interested in. Um, and also be sure to take note of any questions that you may have for the students. We will transition to the open Q&A um, portion once everyone has spoken. So at this point, if I could have all the student panelists except for our first presenter turn off their cameras, that would be great. Thank you so much. And we'll get started with our first student, Jess Zeller. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, so as I just mentioned in my introduction, I'm a senior studying NGOs and social change. So a lot of my um, really impactful experiences with USC Dornsythe have been in the nonprofit space, really getting to gain hands-on experience working with a variety of organizations, both in LA, um, in other states across the US, and then also internationally. Um, so today I'm gonna touch on three different experiences that I've had. Um, and the first is something that I actually got to do um, the summer after my freshman year. I participated in a Maymester called NGOs in Global Context. Um, and for those of you who don't know what a Maymester is, um, it's a really cool um, course offered at USC where you, um, after the spring semester, travel somewhere usually for about three to four weeks and um, get to be with a really cool small group of students um, and a professor and really have a hands-on learning experience. So for my Maymester, I went to New York City and Washington, D.C and got to meet with a bunch of really awesome nonprofits and talk to executives there and learn what their career path has been, what their education path was, and really just ask questions on how I would be able to get there someday. Um, some really cool organizations that I got to visit included the United Nations, Human Rights Watch, Center for American Progress, and Earth Justice. 
So that was an absolutely incredible opportunity to have already as a freshman. Um, and then another experience that I've had that really allowed me to get to know the nonprofit space better was last spring when I had the opportunity to study abroad with Doran Seif in Athens, Greece. And um, I was in a nonprofit specific program in Greece where I got to take a class learning about um, the different social and political issues in Greece and how nonprofits were working to address them. And I was also paired with a nonprofit called Melissa Network for Women, which is a support center for refugee women and children. And I got to volunteer and work with them regularly throughout, um, throughout my two months while I was in Greece. Um, and then the last experience that um, I'm going to touch on today is something um, not international, very close to home here in South Central LA, um, my work with the USC Helenes. For those of you that have never heard of the USC Helenes, we are one of the oldest community outreach organizations on campus. And um, we are an organization of about 120 student volunteers. I've been a part of the organization since I was a freshman and it has given me so many incredible opportunities to volunteer in the LA community. Um, I actually had the opportunity to serve as um, the director of community outreach for the organization and now as the president. Um, and just some examples of the volunteering that we do in the LA community. We do a lot of work with 32nd Street School, which is a school right across the street from USC. We have a weekly tutoring program with the third graders there, and then also a weekly mentorship program with um, high schoolers. In addition to 32nd Street School, we also go down to the Downtown Women's Center, which is a homeless shelter for women living on Skid Row, um, and we'll run different workshops for them. We'll cook breakfast, we'll prepare um, hygiene products or um, gift bags. Um, we do a lot of work with them. Um, and then lastly, we also do a lot of environmental outreach. So we work with a bunch of local urban farms. We run um, beach cleanups in Santa Monica or other surrounding areas. So we really kind of do a whole bunch of um, different varieties of service. And it's really awesome to be a part of an organization where you can um, build such meaningful relationships and then also serve um, the community that you're in and get to know it better. Um, yeah, so if you have any more questions about my time um, volunteering in Greece or um, my main master in New York and DC, or my experience in USC Helenes, I would love to answer your questions during the Q&A portion of um, this event, but it was so great sharing my experiences with you. Thank you so much, Jess. And now we're gonna hear from our second student, Jackson. Hi, everyone. Today I'm gonna to be talking about Dornsife's Problems Without Passports program, especially the one that I did my freshman year and how it fit into my involvements here at USC. Um, first off, so we're all on the same page, a problem without passport is slightly different from the Maymester that we just talked about. It's a three week long summer course that combines problem based research exercises with study in various parts of the world. So in my case, this was looking at the effects of climate change and humankind on various marine ecosystems at a mixture between the kelp forests off of California, as well as the coral reefs in the Bahamas. Um, so basically we spent all this time scuba diving and learning how to do research underwater. For the first week we stayed at USC's Wrigley Institute, which is USC's oceanfront environmental research facility on Catalina Island. While still in California, we got to learn the basics of underwater research, scuba dive, snorkeled, and hung out with everyone else in the class. Um, we would wake up, dive, discuss, sleep, and repeat. It was super grueling because it's a whole course completed in three weeks, but there are a lot worse ways to spend the start of the summer than in the beautiful ocean. Um, this all prepared us to leave for two weeks in the Bahamas, where we stayed on a sparsely populated island there called Andros Island and began trying to put these skills to use. The course ended up being a mixture of research diving, land research, and social outings off of the base. One specific project that I want to talk about was our examination of how effective Bahamian conch shell harvesting laws were. That's a mouthful, but basically it's illegal to harvest conch shells that are below a certain age and length. Um, and so we went through all of these piles of basically um, conch leftover shells and measured them and found that almost none of them were legal sizes. Um, so this taught me that in a real way, it's not just enough to legislate 
to make changes in the environment. You also have to do things that will promote a change in the minds of the people who these laws are for. Um, so leaving the Maymester and coming back to Los Angeles for my sophomore year, this led me to be want to be more involved with sustainability at USC. Um, and part of this was becoming more involved in the Environmental Student Assembly, which is USC's largest sustainability organization. Basically, we are the sustainability branch of the student government. We provide programming and advocacy that's related towards sustainability issues for the entire student body. Um, this can be things like normally in November, we have a huge vegan food festival that provides meals um, for a thousand students who just wanna try out exciting new vegan options that maybe they didn't know exist. We also host a huge Earth Month event where we have a famous speaker come. The last one that we had was Bill Nye, the science guy, so that was super exciting. Um, but we also organized trips to go back to this Wrigley Institute um, that so many students at USC don't necessarily know about or get the opportunity to visit during their time here. Um, just like in my PWP where I learned that you have to change the minds of people about sustainability in addition to making sustainable rules, I'm really trying to do that here at USC. And I hope that if you're interested in this, you will reach out to me during the Q&A session and learn how you can get involved with sustainability at the university. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jackson. And make sure um, for my for the audience members, you pay attention to the chat because there's links to the programs that um, our first presenter just talked about. And then we also have um, the Wrigley Institute that Jackson just mentioned. And now we're going to hear from Elise. Thank you. Hi everyone. So once again, my name is Louise Hussein and I'm a junior from Houston, Texas, studying cognitive science with a minor in statistics. So what first attracted me to USC and also a reason why I chose it was because of all the research opportunities and because this is a research intensive university. Um, but honestly, I love the fact that the research in itself was not just one thing. USC still had research that was a combination of different fields and research that was interdisciplinary. So three years ago, when I was first applying to USC, I read about the Brain and Creativity Institute, or BCI, um, which is a research center dedicated to the investigation of the mind and the brain, but combining it with creativity and the arts. Um, flash forward to today, I work as a research, research assistant at two labs within this very institute that made me choose this university. So a little bit more about BCI. Uh, the Brain and Creativity Institute brings together creative minds on campus to conduct research related to the brain sciences, um, there's actually an auditorium in the BCI building with perfect acoustics um, devoted to music and theater performances, literary readings, scientific presentations, all that fun stuff. Um, my first semester at USC, I immediately reached out to my academic advisor, wanting to get involved in research of some sort as soon as possible. By the end of the year, I ended up becoming a research assistant at the Computational Social Sciences Lab. That's a mouthful, just gonna call it CSSL from now on. Um, but CSSL is an inter interdisciplinary group of researchers and students from the psychology and computer science departments. Um, and we're focusing on theory-based natural language um, and social media analysis to kind of figure out what causes someone to use moral language or hate speech. So as a research assistant, a lot of what I'm doing is analyzing data sets from Twitter and Facebook. Um, and like looking at like a lot of data and just analyzing what people said and why they may have used that specific language. Just last year, I also joined the Brain and Music Lab where we study the effects of music processing on the developing brain and track that progress with electroencephalograms so EEGs, um, MRI machines, and behavioral measures. So it's a lot of fun. I get to work a lot with young kids, like kind of elementary, middle schoolers. Um, and we study these children before they start any music training. And then we follow them as their training increases to kind of see how their brain and their behavior change um, in relation to the training. And it's mostly just in hoping that findings from these studies give a better understanding to the benefits of music training, and if they help uh, with social and psychological merits, if they help with school performance, and what really a childhood music education means in that sense, in terms of the psychological aspects. But as a research assistant, I'm able to administer behavioral measures as well as EEG testing. So I get to work with a lot of that really cool machinery. Like I get to put like the EEG cap on participants, like the gel, the electrodes. It's really cool, really fun stuff. I like to geek out about it. That's just 
anyways. Um, but you can also get paid for your research. This summer, I participated in SURF, which is the Summer Undergraduate Research Fund. And I got a $3,000 stipend to conduct research with my labs over the summer. Um, and it was all remote and virtual. It was great. Literally, first time I got paid for my research, so it was a really great opportunity for me to actually get compensated for the work that I'm doing. But talking about remote working at labs, now because of COVID, a lot of the work that I do is related to participant data analysis or other administrative work that's easy to do at home. So like creating surveys, like analyzing what participants have said during testing and things like that. Um, but there are a lot of ways to get involved in research on campus. In my experience, I like panic emailed my academic advisor and was like, hi, I really want to get involved in research on campus, but I have no idea how. Please help me. Um, and she sent me the entire research directory for my department with every single lab that was looking for an undergraduate research assistant that year. So I basically just went through that list um, and applied to labs I was interested in. And here I am. Um, another way, a great way to get involved in research that I know a lot of other students do is actually by talking to their professors. A lot of times, if you know that your professors are doing research that fits your interests, don't be afraid to talk to them. Um, I'm sure they'd be interested, they'd be, they'd be willing to share um, more information about opportunities that they may know of or might have as well. I know other panelists today are, have also done research as well, so maybe like in the Q&A they can talk about um, how they found their research. But for me overall, working with researchers who are experts in their field has been one of the most rewarding experiences. And it's shown me that this is something that I might want to pursue post undergrad, but I have learned an incredible amount and I can't wait to continue working with the, in BCI until I graduate. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Elise. And Elise's research, um, the different labs that she works in are posted in the chat. And now we are going to hear from Devin. Thank you. So hi guys, um, my name is Devin Patel and just, just to reiterate, um, I'm double majoring in environmental studies and business administration. So first I'm gonna tell you guys about an amazing student organization that I currently serve as the vice president of called Unruh Associates. So when I came to USC my fall freshman year, uh, this was fall 2018, I knew I wanted to get involved in something that was related to politics and really not so much partisan, but more so fostering conversation and just civic engagement in general. And surprisingly, there was an organization that perfectly lined up with that called Under Associates. So we are what we like to call ourselves the premier bipartisan political organization focused on fostering that civic engagement and political dialogue across the aisle on campus. And so as vice president, I oversee pretty much all org wide functions along with our president and we plan a lot of events and um, just really try to foster conversation with our members because that to us is so important in creating that safe space. And so Honor Associates puts on many roundtables with political office holders, pollsters, and more. Our highlight event of each semester is actually a bipartisan political debate between USC's four largest partisan organizations. So there's a lot of cross-campus collaboration, which is awesome. And so last fall, we had Democrats, Republicans, Libertarians, and Trojans advocating for political progress to be key issues at the time, which were impeachment, climate change, and abortion. Our debate was also covered by USA Annenberg News and President Carol Full attended, which was truly an honor. Unruh Associates also gets lots of access and priority um, when it comes to internship opportunities and special events with the USC Dornsife Center for the Political Future, an amazing institution that I'm going to tell you a little bit about now. So actually, Unruh Associates, the student organization, is part of a greater institution on campus called the USC Dornsife Center for the Political Future, and this is one of my favorite institutions. The center offers many opportunities to students from all backgrounds to engage in politics. They put on great events, um, a lot that we, we work on with them, such as the roundtables, um, a, a luncheon called Politics and Pizza that happens every so often. Now, obviously, it will be on Zoom, but you get to talk with office holders and political practitioners while eating lunch, and it's very casual and just informational political event debriefs, such as after the RNC and the DNC a couple weeks ago, and just discussions with experts on salient issues at the time, because as you know, the conversation is always evolving. Another thing that's super cool about the center is that it offers internship pairings for the summer, fall, and spring, and not just in the areas of partisan politics. There's research, there's um, public policy, there's PR, there's commu strategic communications, so many different aspects of politics. Um, the center offers pairing, internship pairings all across the year. And so, for example, um, one of the managers at the center just recommended me for an internship at a strategic communications affair run by Hillary Clinton's former speechwriter, Dan Schwerin. He was also a USC fellow a couple of years ago. Um, some of their clients have included Nike and Patagonia, so super high profile. But I interviewed for the position and got the offer. But this, the most cool thing for me was the fact that the person that interviewed me actually went to USC as well. Um, 
She graduated in 2018, and we just talked a lot about our experience um, with the Center for the Political Future and just at USC in general um, as undergrads. And so this leads me to tell you the Trojan Network truly, truly is a thing, and it truly pays off when you network with the right people. And so um, on top of this, the center also brings in lots of political experts and former elected officials to teach seminar style courses. They're very intimate, very small, and approximately 15 students, which is super great. So for example, during my freshman year, I took a course with Simone Sanders. Um, she's former press secretary to Bernie Sanders in 2016, also CNN correspondent, and now senior advisor to Joe Biden. And I even saw her at an event at LA earlier this year, um, super random, but it was so cool to see her again. She still remembers me and we still keep in touch online. And also, um, I'm even more excited because tomorrow I'm starting a new fellows class with former California Senator Barbara Boxer, all about demystifying politics and debriefing the fall 2020 election. So finally, I'll wrap it up with a few other cool events that I've done with the center. Um, so one of them during my freshman year, we were invited to the Hollywood, the CNN Hollywood studio um, to see Governor Gavin, Gavin Newsom interviewed on the Van Jones show, where he talked about a lot about his gubernatorial agenda and very much so about what he wanted to accomplish in his next few years as governor. Um, but then what we didn't know is that the second guest was actually Kim Kardashian. And so when she came out, she talked about a lot about her legal efforts, um, her trying to get her law degree and a lot of her prison reform efforts. So it was super cool to listen to her and see her um, up close speaking about all that. And yes, we did get a picture with her. Also, um, I attended the Sorrell Political Leadership Summit this year in Sacramento, which is an all expenses paid trip to Sacramento to um, meet with state professionals, state elected officials, lobbyists, and panels and networking dinners. It was such a great experience. And I've met some Congress people like Joe Kennedy, Congressman Will Hurd, and so many others. Finally, one of the coolest opportunities I've had was the ability to meet Mayor Pete Buttigieg online in March in a forum with the Georgetown Institute of Politics. And I was the only student from USC who got to ask him a question in front of thousands of viewers. So with all this being said, I hope that what I've told you today has made you interested in the Center for the Political Future and shows you how many amazing opportunities lie there, no matter what major you come from. I've had the best experience with this amazing institution and their resources continue to provide me with an unbelievable mix of just great, great opportunities. So if you have any questions about either Unruh Associates, a student organization, or the, the institution called the USC Dornsife Center for the Political Future, I'm happy to expand more on that during the Q&A section. Thank you. Great, thanks so much, Devin. And um, you'll see in the chat that we have the Center for the Political Future um, link in the chat. And we are on to our very last student presenter, Joe. Thanks, Joe. I knew that would happen. Here we are. <laughs> hey, my name's Joe, and once again, I'm a pre med double majoring in health and human sciences on the psych track and religion. Um, but actually, when I came to USC at first, um, and up until the middle of my sophomore year, um, I was actually a neuroscience major. Um, I was physical sciences all the way, so like neurotransmitters, receptors, lives in the brain. That was my bread and butter. Um, so freshman year, I sought out more ways I could investigate the human body and what healthcare looked like from an upfront and personal perspective. Um, unfamiliar with what opportunities there were at USC, um, and maybe similarly to the position that some of you are in right now. Um, I just Googled medical opportunities at USC and stumbled upon the website for Trojan Health Volunteers, which is a part of a huge le service learning org called the Joint Educational Project, or JEP. I applied and started volunteering weekly um, at the California Hospital Medical Center, which is just a convenient 15 minute bus ride away from campus. I volunteered in the emergency department where I spent time shadowing ER doctors as they checked up on patients and on some of the more exciting days actually observed them perform surgeries. Um, and though I was gung ho about health regarding the body, um, other experiences I had at USC afterwards opened me up to see that health actually encompasses so much more. Uh, like Jess Zelmer, who uh, previously mentioned May Masters. I also took a May Master course, um, but about medical anthropology at the end of my sophomore year. We learned about alternative methods of healing and the effect of placebos on health outcomes. And as a part of the course, surviving on just one backpack, I walked over 200 miles from Portugal to Spain on a pilgrimage route called the Camino de Santiago. I got to hear incredible stories of healing from other pilgrims who were also on the route and began to realize the common denominator of their stories was not a physical healing, but of emotional and spiritual renewal. My entire perspective of the human healing process was forever transformed from one centered around the body to one that acknowledges the necessity of tending to the mind and the spirit. 
I was aching for an opportunity on campus to put my new realizations to action. And so the following semester, I received an email from my academic advisor and pro tip, check all those emails from your advisors and the pre and the pre um, professional offices about a position called the community health organizers, which is in the office of health promotion a strategy and under the USC Keck School of Medicine. I applied and had the absolute joy of joining the team. Um, so as a CHO, I work with a small team of other students, student orgs, and key figures in USC administration to strategize and implement well-being initiatives across our campus, covering topics of mental health and thriving, healthy relationships, substance abuse, and sexual violence. Recognizing that it takes an entire village to create wide-scale sustainable change, our goal is to work with every entity that makes up USC so that our students can thrive on campus, whether that be in person or as of recently online. And though I initially came into college um, thinking I would solely learn how to treat patients biomedically, my diverse experiences at USC radically reformed the way I thought about and now want to approach medicine as a future, future adolescent psychiatrist myself. I definitely would not be the inquisitive, driven, and go-getter type individual I am today if not for the incredible opportunities I undertook at USC, and many of which I actually found online. Um, my journey took a million and one turns along the way, um, including changing, then adding another major and minor, <laughs> trying out over 15 different clubs, changing my career path almost every day in the middle of my junior year, um, and now applying for Fulbright to South Africa to investigate African indigenous healing practices. Um, also, please feel free to ask me more questions about my involvement um, during Q&A after this if you are interested. Um, through it all, I can confidently say that USC has given me ample opportunities to um, get a glimpse into what each career path I ever considered might look like for me. And without the exposure to all these options, I may never have been so sure that the direction I am headed in now is indeed the right one for me. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Joe. And a huge thank you to all of our student panelists for sharing their experiences. Um, so now we're going to bring back everyone, Fabi, Jess, Jackson, Elise, Devin, and Joe. So at this point, um, I see a few of you have already um, asked a few, a few questions in the Q&A. Um, so if you have any questions, please enter them into the Q&A box and you'll find it at the lower, the bottom of your Zoom screen. We will answer some questions live and you can specify if your question is for a specific panelist or, um, or for Fabi, um, or if you're directing, um, yeah, if you're directing your questions to either the students or the staff would be helpful for us. And additionally, um, some members of our USC Dornsife Admission and Student Success team are going to um, type in and post responses to certain questions so make sure you check the answered questions tab in the Q&A. Um, so just to get started, um, because this is just such a unique semester being in a virtual learning environment, um, we just wanna address again, how can these new students in the audience, how can they get involved in USC clubs and organizations while working and studying remotely? Um, and whoever wants to start can go ahead first. Maybe we can, we can start with Jess. Yeah, so it is something difficult to navigate, navigate right now. I think even when I was a freshman and it wasn't virtual, it's still very difficult to um, kind of find out how to get involved on campus. Um, but something that I would recommend is um, obviously the involvement fair already happened, but um, to look at organizations, kind of like what Joe was saying about just kind of searching things that you're interested in and going onto their website and going onto their social media and just learning more about the organization and then reaching out to them either um, via their social media channels or um, if they have an email. Um, I know that people who are leaders in these clubs are always so excited to talk to incoming freshmen and tell them about their organization. Um, so yeah, I would just really find organizations that you think fit your passions and your interests and reach out to them and ask them how to get involved because even though we are virtual I know that a lot of organizations are still recruiting or just wanting new people to join um, from a virtual setting. Awesome. 
any of our other panelists have some advice for the, the audience members? Sure, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I highly, highly recommend checking out Engage SC. I can actually send the link in the chat as well. But it's literally like it has a list of every single club and organization on campus and you can actually filter them um, depending on like what specifically you're interested in. Like if you want like a service organization or like something more academic related, you can actually put in those filters. And then I think Engage C also has like all the contact information for those clubs or like a website or something. So great resource. Definitely check it out. Thanks. Great, uh, great link in the chat for everybody who who um, is interested in joining clubs and organizations. So our next question, we we got a lot of questions from from our pre-registration um, students on getting involved in research. Um, so a lot of students are curious on how they can engage with their professors. Um, what's the best way to contact or connect with faculty to to get involved in different research opportunities? So I know most of you have engaged in research in some some aspect. So anyone have anything to say on how to connect with faculty? Go to office hours. <laughs> um, office hours are like on Zoom for most professors right now, but like it's still a good way for you to go and like get to know them, get to know the kind of work that they're doing, not even just research, but in general, like. Professors are cool people. Like it's cool to go to their office hours and just get to know them more. Um, sometimes if you find a professor that you really connect with, like you can ask them if, you know, like if they want to be your mentor or something like that. Um, but office hours are a really good way to connect with faculty in general um, and just ask them for opportunities that, you know, maybe you're interested in. It doesn't hurt to ask always. And professors also really, really want to help. Even right now, since everything is virtual and they can't come onto campus either, they really do miss interacting with students, so still take advantage of their office hours, I'd say. Um, I can speak a little bit about that as well. Um, so I would say, like, something that I definitely used um, as a freshman was I was part of this, like, GE class, or it was in thematic option, um, TO, and yeah, so I loved my professor. I loved what he was studying um, or what he was researching, and yeah, I just like wanted to get to know him better. So what I did was like after our first paper, um, after we got our grades back, I like went to him and I was like, hey, like I wanted to just like learn how to improve for next time, how to write better. Um, and then that just kind of like escalated from there. And now he's like one of my biggest mentor figures on campus. Um, and he just wrote a recommendation for my Fulbright and like he's just been such a great support for everything. And so that's like a tip for possibly a professor that you are taking a class with and you're kind of interested in getting to know them better. Um, so I'm also doing research right now um, for my religion honors. And I just cold emailed this one professor that had awesome publications and was almost exactly what I wanted to do. Um, which is looking at the intersection of religion and social justice. And so, yeah, I just like cold emailed him and I was like, hey, I'm a senior at USC. Like, um, I read some of your publications. They seem super great. Um, and I think professors also really like to see that you are interested in their specific um, discipline, whatever that is, um, and their specific topic. Um, a lot of students will you know, just write one general email template and then send it to a bunch. But actually, it's much more useful to read what they actually do and then put in specifics of like, okay, this caught my eye. Like, I really liked this part of your research um, and kind of cater it more towards that. Um, so yeah, those are a few tips that I have. Great, great. Thank you both so much. Um, we also received a few questions about um, how to get involved with service learning or different service opportunities online. So I know that Fabi mentioned earlier that the Campus Activities Office has different opportunities to get involved with volunteering. Um, we've heard from a few of the students with volunteering. Maybe if after Fabi, someone can jump in and explain a little bit more what the joint education program or project is, that would be um, also very helpful. So first, to have Fabi kind of expand on what her office is doing. Yeah, so through our volunteer center, um, Friends and Neighbors Day is actually a, a bi-weekly, so twice a month. Um, I'll put the link to our, our, our volunteer center um, website in the chat in a bit. Um, but what we're gonna do, um, there's a few different projects that they're doing uh, 
regularly. So there's some that our uh, students are directed on how to create um, training videos to teach children how to do math or science experiments. There is some um, organizations through the uh, Smithsonian that are doing a lot of archival work and digital like transcription work. Um, so we're partnering with different organizations uh, to do virtual uh, service projects. Um, and, you know, they're changing every time we do a, a Friends and Neighbors Day. Um, the other thing I will point out is there are a lot of our recognized student organizations that are service focused, like the Hellenes. Um, so they're all, a lot of the organizations are still doing their service projects virtually. So um, Engage SC is a great place to search for service in particular. There's a category to search for that. Um, you can find those directly um, on the Engage SC link. Great, thanks so much. And then have any of the other students participated in JEP in the past or with your classes? Um, some of, uh, I think for Psychology 100, um, they had it for like extra credit opportunities. Um, and some actually, I think some courses even require you to. Um, those are kind of the more service learning based um, courses. But yeah, it's a great opportunity. We also I had a question. Through, oh. Oh. There you go, Jackson. I did it through my student organization, and we did marine science education for second and third graders. Um, and yeah, it was just a super good opportunity um, to get off campus during the week when I was a freshman. So I super enjoyed it. Awesome. We also had a question about different opportunities to get involved with um, communities of students, different, different populations of students with special needs. Um, so I believe one of you, I think Jess, did you work in something with special needs? Yeah, um, one organization that I'm a part of, I'm actually on the executive board of it, is called Kicks for Kids. Um, and it's usually a weekly event that happens every Sunday on campus where um, kids with special needs in the community and their families get to come onto campus and basically um, students are paired with um someone as their buddy for the day and you can play soccer you can um play with hula hoops or face paint or chalk or really whatever um the kids that you're buddied with want to participate in um obviously given the situation um we're not having in-person events um this semester but we are transitioning to some online events for um the kids that normally come to our events and um so it's mostly gonna be like asynchronous videos where student um, volunteers um, can make like a fun activity or a dance or some sort of like Zoom activity to send to all of our normal participants. Um, so if that's something that you're interested in getting involved in, um, you can go to Kicks for Kids um, Facebook page and um, send a message or any of um, the social media accounts and um, I know that we're actively looking for more volunteers that want to keep um, the kids involved, even though we can't um, physically be together right now. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, another question we have is actually about um, internships, which if you're a brand new student to USC, you may wanna just focus on getting used to your classes at, at first, but getting involved in internships eventually is something that I think a lot of students are interested in. So the question is, can I find advisors for career planning and job seeking? I mean, I know a few of you have had internships or work in an internship office. So I think I know Elise wants to go first. So if you could expand a little bit on um, what you do for career pathways. Yeah, um, so I work as a peer career advisor at the Dornsack Career Pathways office. We have three amazing advisors, um, Octavio, who advises for the humanities clusters, Vivi advises for the natural sciences, and Cynthia advises for the social sciences. You can meet with any of those three for anything at all. Um, you don't have to meet with the specific advisor for your cluster, but if you go onto the website, you can actually um, make an appointment. And if none of those times work for you, feel free to email them. Um, but there are a lot of opportunities or resources on Connect SC specifically. If you know what Connect SC is, it's um, kind of like a career platform through the USC Career Center, but they have a lot of really amazing resources for um, internship search. Connect SC itself is really great for internship search, but there are other platforms like Vault. Um, there's another one that I'm completely blanking on, but there are a bunch on there that are really good for internship search. 
I can actually send a link to the Dornsife Career Pathways website in the chat so you can check out the advisors and opportunities that we have this semester as well. Cool. And then building off of that, so the Career Center is a super valuable resource. There's a lot of, I mean, not there is Connect SC, but there's also a lot of valuable um, just people there that are willing to help you. You can book appointments um, for like resume reviews, um, just career consulting in general. If you really like want to try to get a feel for an industry or an area, um, they're super helpful and have a lot of resources and a lot of workshops all the time. And then also if you're looking, depending on what area you're looking in, um, certain institutes, like I talked about, like the Center for the Political Future, have internship matching. So they kind of, they, if you follow their like either social media channels or their email lists, they send out um, emails about like deadlines for like fall, spring and summer internships. And they kind of pair you with the company once you interview with them and talk with them. And these are not just locked in politics. There's research, like if even if you're a science major and you're more interested in some policy research, they do a lot with the city of Los Angeles. They do a lot of work with nonprofits around the area, um, communication firms, kind of like what I mentioned. And then also of course, campaigns and partisan, um, partisan endeavors if you're looking at that. But so a lot of these institutes have a lot as well. And so I just want to touch on that. There's a lot of opportunities from USC's Career Center and all that to also these smaller offices that have a lot um, of connections just based on their alumni and their um, specialties, but yeah. Thank you. And um, just, you know, we're checking the clock. I think we have time for one more question. Um, so one of the questions we received is, what are some resources or opportunities that we can take advantage of during online school to help us academically or socially? Um, if anyone wants to jump in to talk about some of the resources or how they've utilized different um, centers or their advisors, that would be great. Um, yeah, I can speak a little into that. Um, so there's this thing called supplemental instruction, um, it, which is the key for like all science, basic science classes. So like general chemistry, general bio, organic chemistry, physics, all those um, great classes. And I know that they have them for math as well. Um, but basically it's just like an hour group tutoring session where there's an SI leader um, who has created a sheet for you. and you, I think you should be getting an email if you are registered for that course um, from the SI leader every week just for the sheet um, and they'll go through it with you um, for an hour and it's just a super helpful resource sometimes and like the professor did not really, I was like very confused during that class, the SI leader would just like clarify everything for me um, and so that was really helpful and then there are also some just like incredible resources online. Google is like going to be your best friend. <laughs> There's so much on there um, as well. So yeah. Yeah. And I also know, I know this because I used to be a math major. I'm not anymore. I couldn't do it. Um, but I know the math center is still running online. Um, if you, if you're maybe taking some of those math courses and you're maybe having a little trouble, I know the math center is a really great resource to go and like just talk to teaching assistants um, who are there. They're literally just there to help you during that time. I'm not really sure like what the hours are, but I'm sure if you look it up, it should be there um, because I know the math center is still running and working. It's just all virtual, um, but it's great. Definitely go. TAs are really, really helpful. Thank you all so much for, for providing such great answers. Um, and thank you to all of our audience members for joining us today. Um, so all five of the students that, that spoke today are Dornsife Ambassadors. Um, it's a program that works alongside the Dornsife Office of Admission and Student Success, where we have student representatives who interact with prospective students as well as some admitted students at times um, to talk about their experiences. So we do have an application um, that is going to be shared in the chat. The application is due by the end of today, so you have a few hours to work on it. If you are a transfer student, the application for our Dornsife Transfer Ambassador Program will be open on Tuesday, September 8th. Um, you can also find that in the chat. Please be sure to check your weekly Dornsife Connection newsletter emails from Dornsife Admission for more information. And if we weren't able to respond to one of your questions today, please feel free to contact us. Our contact information will be posted in the chat and it's also on the screen. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for joining us today. Have a wonderful evening and fight on. Thank you to all our panelists again. Have a great night, guys.